The Malice at the Palace is recognized as one of the worst nights of NBA history. For those who don't know, The Malice at the Palace was an event that took place on November 19, 2004, in a rivalry game between the defending champion Detroit Pistons and the talented Indiana Pacers. In summary of what took place, the game was physical throughout, and you could sense the tension between the two rivals. It reached a boiling point with only moments left in the fourth quarter. The Indiana Pacers' Ron Artest strongly fouled Ben Wallace. Wallace retaliated, and the teams began to surround the players as the commotion was just starting to die down. This was barely the start of the mayhem though. Ron Artest then decided to rest on the scorer's table while the refs were getting all the other players under control. After several moments of Artest just chilling there, he's then struck with a beer that was thrown by a fan. And without hesitation, Artest runs into the stands and starts attacking the fan that he thinks threw the drink. Steven Jackson backs him up and is seen throwing violent punches at other fans. It's complete and utter chaos at this point. Chairs are being thrown, Jermaine O'Neal punches a confrontational fan on the court, Ron Artest is nearly pepper sprayed by the police, and the players are showered with food and drinks as they head into the locker room as the game was abruptly ended even with time left in regulation. Ron Artest was suspended for a total of 74 games, which was the entirety of that remaining season. Steven Jackson was suspended for 30 games, and Jermaine O'Neal was suspended for 25 games. Needless to say, this whole ordeal was a huge black eye for the reputation of the NBA, and the event became a catalyst for the softening of the game of basketball as the years have gone on. With that being said, a lot of those aspects have been pretty well documented on YouTube and even on this channel. But one aspect that is rarely discussed is how this event ruined what could have been the only NBA championship in Indiana Pacers history. That might be hard for some of you to envision, but unless you were a die-hard Pacers fan during that era, you probably didn't realize just how strong their championship chances were. The season before the Malice of the Palace, Indiana had one of their best seasons in franchise history, as they were a top three team defensively and had the best record in the entire league with a 61 and 21 record. Heading into the playoffs, many people considered them as the favorites in the Eastern Conference. But unfortunately, they were stopped short by one of the greatest defenses of all time, the 2004 Detroit Pistons, who eliminated them from the Eastern Conference Finals in six games. They were extremely close to winning the championship in the 2003 to 2004 season, and in that following offseason, they got even better by adding the fantastic wing scorer in Steven Jackson. Along with that, Ron Artest had taken a huge leap forward, as he was clearly on his way to a career year, as he was just entering his athletic prime. He was dominating on both sides of the court, as he was averaging nearly 25 points per game while looking to repeat his title as the NBA's Defensive Player of the Year. At the time of the Malice at the Palace, the Pacers had started the season with a 7-2 record, and in both of those losses, many of their best players didn't participate due to injuries. With a loaded roster that was performing well, with headliners like a prime Ron Artest, Steven Jackson, Reggie Miller, and Jermaine O'Neal, they appeared as if they were the best team in the entire league, and the players thought so too. You know, at that point, every the whole league knew we were the best team in the league that year. We had the best record, and this game was our test to see where we were. You know, they were one of the best teams at the time. So we went there and blew them out. We went about 15 with like 45 seconds left. Yep. They had defeated us the year before in the playoffs to move on to the finals and win. Ron and Jermaine were kind of having a butt of heads of whose team it was. I was like, you guys, it's neither of your team, it's my team. Don't you guys understand if we win this series, we're gonna be NBA champs? Because I knew whoever we face in the West, which turned out to be the Lakers, defense was gonna win that championship. And the two best defensive teams at the time were Detroit and Indiana. I was like, if we win this series, we're going to be champs. But they couldn't understand that. And they go on to win the championship. And then, you know, obviously we're, we're conference rivals, we're division rivals. And they just got into it. And that was nothing. That happens all the time. That was broken up. It's the cup that came in later. But unfortunately, that's when the malice of the palace happened. As Steven Jackson said, that game with Detroit was seen as a measuring stick for the Pacers. It was against the team that had just eliminated them from last season's playoffs. Not only did the Pacers outplay the Pistons in a rivalry game, but they were absolutely destroying them in their own building before the brawl broke out. Now consider this, 
Despite the fact that Ron Artest was suspended for the entire season, and Jermaine O'Neal and Steven Jackson were suspended for 55 games combined, Indiana still made the playoffs and pushed the Eastern Conference champion Detroit Pistons to six games once again. If that's what they could accomplish in a rocky season of suspensions and drama, and without their best player, then it's hard for me to argue against a fully loaded 2005 Pacers team winning the championship. Sure, they would have had to have beat San Antonio in the 2005 NBA Finals, but I do think that's something that they would have done. Not only do they match up really well, but they had a pretty good history against the Spurs. In the 04 and the 05 season, the Pacers had a 2-2 record against San Antonio, and two of those games took place after the Pacers had received all of their suspensions. The saddest part about this whole thing is the fact that this was Reggie Miller's farewell season at the age of 39, and he was still a very productive player at that point, so it would have been a beautiful way for him to end his career with his only championship ring to wrap up his 18 seasons that he played exclusively for the Indiana Pacers. After so many years of being under the foot of Jordan and the Bulls and Shaq and Kobe's Lakers, it almost seems like this was his ultimate destiny. But unfortunately, sometimes life doesn't have fairy tale endings. So what do you guys think? Do you think the 2005 Pacers would have won the NBA championship? And how would that have affected Reggie Miller's legacy? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.